Hi, and welcome to my mental monologue. I am your host, Shelby Lee Kyles. With me is the scientific genius, Chris Candlin. Cracking another beer for the homie G's. That's right. Crack a cold one, boys. Today we're talking about unifying America, how we believe America truly should be. And see, now, sorry to take over here for a, a moment. When we say unifying America, we are not referring to the global fallacy that people refer to when they say America as the collection of states in North America that consist of the United States. When, when we say unifying America, we mean unifying the American continent into a global superpower, combining the collective, not only militaristic, but uh, resource-rich powers and great political powers of Canada, the United States, and all of the South American countries. Because why, as the great nation we are in Canada to our north, do we spend so many of our re of our hard-earned resources uh, messing about in foreign nations that are across an ocean that ultimately have no impact on our day-to-day -day life when we let our neighbors who directly physically contact us to the south starve and live in constant terror under the powers of drug cartels and corrupt governments when we could easily easily bolster their governments and their freedoms and even induct them possibly into the united states or possibly into some sort of just a uh, uh, american continent centric sort of NATO type deal. You mean like some kind of dual citizenship type thing? No, no, no. So how like, so in Europe they have NATO, which is a collection of uh, uh, the majority of the European states in a military pact to defend each other. Mm. So we could form like the, uh, you could call it like the America pact, where the where if where we would have a we would have a mutual agreement where if like somebody messed with one of the South American countries, they would have the backup of all of those other countries that were in that collective and the, our, the U.S. and Canada and the, the American collective. It's about, so the, the idea is about unifying all of this, the countries and states of uh, the uh, American continent under one, or, or just unifying them to the point where we just help each other. You know, one nation is in need and another nation helps them because we are, we're one continent. We need to move away from influencing large swaths of continents that really ultimately don't impact us when we, uh, we out, when we almost what seems like purposefully ignore countries that directly impact our own due to their geographic uh, proximity to us. But what you're saying is it's more like a tribunal because it's like, Putting all the people together from all these different nations. Yeah. We took all the people from South America, from Mexico, from places in Canada, even from the 13 or 14 regions that America owns, you know. All of the Micronesia, Micronesia yeah, all of the, the uh, uh, Virgin Islands, all those places. Not protectorates, but. Uh, even Cuba would have to be a part of the. the of it because no of cuba would be a, a huge part of it I, and and uh, it, it may be a little, a little a little off topic but the fact that we have allowed uh tensions and uh, arguments and angers that existed when or that that arose when my grandfather was a teenager <laughs> That's ridiculous, man. Why the fact that the Cuba embargo is still in place, it, it, it's it's just ridiculous to me. It it, it like I I have to it, it, it's like imagine if your grandfather had a neighbor that he hated, and to this day you were like, oh, I don't walk past that motherfucker's front porch. You know, you're like, what's wrong with just walk down the street? <laughs> walk down the street, man. Nobody cares anymore. It's stupid. It's so stupid. We and, well, and too. We could we if we opened up trade between the United States and Cuba 100%, it would help the Cuban people so much. Their country is starving for money. They have no, they they really have no import and export. When America would buy their goods at a voracious 
Right. <clears throat> and and on another topic, if you think about all of and, and this is and this extends to all of the countries, American, Argentinian, Mexican, all of those South American countries, right? Think of all of the people there that have either illegally or legally emigrated to the United States. Well, if, that's well, no, because, no, 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 of, the, that's no, no. because of the, the terrorism. Well, no, 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 regardless of that, regardless of all of that, right? Think of all the people that lived in those places that now live here but still have family members in Down both there, places, right? Yeah. If we were to open up connections and communications and cooperation between all of those nations, imagine how easy it would be for families to reconcile that might not have had any real contact outside of, you know, sending money and letters and phone calls and stuff like that for generations for, you know, upwards of 20 to even 50 years. We would reunite entire generations of Mexican Cubans, Mexican South Americans, you know, and, and it would I, it would be an amazing thing. Well, it's just OK. So touching on a couple of things that you just said. First off, with Cuba, the, the whole American thing, you should already know, Cuban Missile Crisis. That's what I meant by it, my grandfather's era. My right. grandfather was a teenager. A teenager. My 78-year-old my grandfather was a teenager during the <laughs> fucking, yeah, or however old. Yeah, so so that, it, that happened in 63. And so the thing about it is, okay. That's ancient history. It is ancient history, but America likes do, to have do, do the Cubans have? Places. Do the Cubans still have nuclear missiles? It, it was all a, a ploy by the exactly. Russians. They they so. they but but no no that do do they or do they not currently hold in their possession that nuclear missiles of. that can strike the United States? Not that I know. Of. See then then why do we have any uh, problem with them other than I mean the well, fact they're that they're the fact yeah society. they have a socialist government and that's the problem. So, but we. So, okay, so they, they have a socialist government, yeah? Uh, Norway and a lot of other Scandinavian yes, yes, have a socialist yes. government. But we still, one, but w what, what is different between Norway and uh, Cuba? The difference is... It, it no, 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 the, no, no, no. What is the difference between them Dwight, and their... And no, 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 not at all. They're, the difference between the two of them is the United States freely and openly does business with Scandinavian countries, but not with Cuba. So it, it has it has been proven empirically, but beyond a doubt, reasonable anything that we can openly deal business wise. We can exchange money. We can we can do business with socialist countries. So the fact that we haven't opened up trade re, uh, trade relations with Cuba, floodgates full, one hundred percent, is solely because we are still punishing them. For the Cuban Missile Crisis, exactly. and that's wrong. That's, that is that is okay. that is go. so so wrong of that's, us. To that's me. where I was going with it. That's what I was trying to get to. But you kind of put off. <laughs> but that's but, but that's so it's, wrong. It's, it's, it's that that's the thing. They're getting punished for the Cuban Missile Crisis. But once again, we're talking about a socialist city. Fidel is dead. So, we need to move on from the last century's problems. But they're more worried about what America's thing is. I think with South America, in a lot of places, he, they want them to convert to capitalism. They don't want to do that. And so that's why America just turns their back on them, besides the fact that they're, you know, they look down upon and stuff. And it's the same thing. And the funniest thing is you got these, like I, I've been talking about lately, 14 territories of the United States. People go use them as, as vacation spots. Oh, I'm going to go to the Virgin Islands. I'm going to put my feet up and drink a coconut, some stupid shit, right? But these people live there. Right? Why all these poor elderly white people go on vacation? And they don't respect these people, but these people come here to the states, and they're treated with disrespect. They're treated with racial slurs, and on top of that, the Pacific Islanders get treated like forgotten about in America. The only time they're remembered is when they're wrestling or they're security guards somewhere. <laughs> and as I know it's fucked up, but this is the jobs that most Samoans and Tongans and things like that get. Or bricklayers, Tongans like to you know get messed with cement. But that's just that's uh, I said cement, just in case y'all thought I saw so I said something crazy. But anyway, <laughs> my point is this: all these nations with these people that have American ties or that are close to America should be a main priority to America instead of playing nine one one to the rest of the world. So what I'm trying to say is this: OK, 
that we need to unify first the 14 territories and make them states, okay? And then at this, on top of that, we need to sit back with South Americans, find out their needs, their issues, and address them and try to make them more one with the United States. As for Canada, kind of thing, we got to overtopple England to get there. Well, no, I think it, it should be, uh, when it comes to Canada, it should be their decision. If they want to break further ties away from England and move towards an American unification effort, awesome. If they don't, that is their decision. I don't want to pressure the Canadians into doing something they don't want to do. If they want to stay ultimately allied to the UK and the crown, that is their decision. It's all about the crown and the ring with them. So they're not going anywhere. Plus they got free health care and all that shit. So But well they can they well also I think they could maintain that connection to the crown and all of that whilst also simultaneously being part of this uh American continent uh focused collective. I concur, but one thing I noticed about and I know a lot of South America got a couple of South American friends, you know, a few. And uh when they talk about their country, they talk about good things in their countries. Usually Brazilians talk about robbery, they talk about prostitutions, uh a lot of fucked up shit. Now Colombians, I do know people from um well People from Colombia, they talk about similar stuff, but they're they're more free, I guess. There's not so much the violence and stuff, you know. But it's when it comes to the drug lords and stuff, there they're they're the main problem there and Brazil. When it comes to now, I have a couple Cuban friends, and one of my Cuban friends went back to Cuba, <laughs> and he was like, you know, almost a citizen or whatever. But he decided he didn't want his citizenship; he wanted to go back to Cuba. Why was that? He says, because in Cuba, all they have to do is get drunk or high and party and fuck women. <laughs> he said, here in America, we work too hard for too little money, and we're all uptight about a lot of stuff. And the way things are right nowadays, we are very uptight individuals. The whole situation's uptight. But I'm thinking that if America does branch out the way you're talking about, it might change things well, a little bit. Well, here, let me let me let me say this then. So, if we do open up a more just easy flowing and connected American continent, it will allow. So, so there were so yeah, obviously, like places in South America are obviously a lot more. I'll use the term free thinking or free living, actually. It's probably a better term, more free living, right? They still go up and grab girls. That, that's breasts. what I mean. Okay, so they're more free living, right? So there's no sexual well, 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 but, but here's the thing about that. When you, if we were to connect the, connect the continent and allow the free travel of more people like that, it, will, it would allow for people who want more quote unquote free living lifestyles to go there and live the way they want to. And the people down there who might reject some of those ideas and then be shunned by the 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 uh the majority for how they think because they might have somewhat more uh conservative views can go somewhere in the collective United States, the, the collective American continent, where that's more accepted and more of the norm. And I think it would help people, because like if you look in Europe, people go where there are people like them, that people think like them, and they can be in a group together. So if we open up the continent like that more, people will slowly migrate, migrate and the, the nation will will calm down and naturalize out. It, it's almost like a layer cake, you know? Like, you'll get these types of folk, and they, they are happy together, and they leave this group alone, and this group leaves that group alone, and everybody will have their own space. I know one thing I want to say about that. One good thing, <laughs> and I know how you are when I say stuff like this, but I'm going to say it, goddammit, okay? 
The women will come up, okay? The women going to come up, and they're going to be making out with dudes. No, stuff. see, actually, that's... Because, of, cause, like, Colombian women, they just want a guy that they can love. They don't care what he looks like, whatever that shit. You know what I'm saying? Same thing, Brazilian chicks, all of you get a lot of women that actually care about family values, that believe in a God, that that's the stuff we, we are missing in America nowadays. You know, people pretend to be a God, but they're heathens and stuff, or they pretend, they, they pretend to be pious and they're the slut of the world, you know, or they're just uppity. Uh, I mean, there's really like two, three different types of women. But my point is, there would be more of a population growth because then you're taking all these people from right down you're down the street, pretty much. Well, well and like them uh, part of the United States. Uh, think, so, like, if you look at and it uh, help out the economy, the economy boom would grow highly in their countries. But here's the flaw: it will die off shortly in our country. No, because we'll start to lose money. No, no, we wouldn't. Because we, as long we as our be... troops are overseas in another country, we will lose money. But that's why Tulsi Gabbard or somebody saying bringing the troops back. Is very something I think highly. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, 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 <laughs> because if you look at a lot of European European people, people will meet who are like, let's say, French and Norwegian or English and French and those those countries that are super close to each other, and they will meet. And it is not that weird for somebody to move from one country to another for uh, their relationship. And but as an American, if you tell somebody, "Oh, I'm moving to England." With my boyfriend, you're like, holy shit, you're moving across an ocean. And, <laughs> and but the, the messed up thing, the, the messed up thing is that if you said the same thing, like, oh, I'm moving to Brazil with my girlfriend, people would be like, holy shit, you're moving really far away. When we should remove that notion because ultimately, if you look at it, it's really no different than a person moving from like uh, Sweden to Italy to for for a relationship and that's how it should be because that opens up people in america who are want to do crazy wild partying in south america well, and they'll find the people that they want to do that with and the people in south america that want a really family oriented thinking but and, and vice versa people will be much more able to find what they want from a relationship when we open up the american continent as a dating well or, or as a relationship source than just one nation to itself. Well, instead of going outside of the nation, America originally had something similar to a foreign, uh, what do you call it, mail order bride system. Back in the day when they started opening up the West Coast and in, in some parts of the Midwest, they brought women in from Germany, from, excuse me, from Sweden and other places, and they came over here and they became mail order brides and they would get mailed off to guys and sent here to san francisco and portland so people could marry them and try to, to uh, bring a population of growth in those states because believe it or not at one time america was only like the 75 people <laughs> you know i'm not gonna lie you gotta think about it if you go back to george washington time okay how many americans was it like 200 uh, George Washington times, uh, somewhere in the high millions. No, not that far. Shelby, we managed to win a war against the greatest international power. Okay. George, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This but if Benjamin you, Franklin shit. Th that's the same time period. Benjamin <laughs> Franklin and George Washington were alive in the same I know, time 70, period. 70, you're, 70. you're talking about the pre colonial periods, well, of, like Jamestown and that. And yes, at certain point, Jamestown was reduced to a super low population. But right. that's when we were still gaining a foothold on this continent. Why it's are not you really your hand, <laughs> because I know a lot about this time period and your lack of knowledge about it. No, it's no lack of knowledge. I'm just saying that because I what I'm talking about happened in 18 like something like right when they right after the, the Louisiana eight, per, 18 right after the Louisiana purposes. They started moving people to the west, and they was getting they had foreign brothers. The eighteen hundreds is the modern era, man. I don't I, know what to tell you. I know, but I'm just I was trying to talk about like a time when there was less humans, and they had to make 
more people. You're you're thinking of more like the late 1600s. So what I'm trying to say is this, okay? I want you to understand what I'm saying, okay? Because you got it way confused of what I'm trying to say. Okay, <laughs> I'm saying it was mail. Okay, fuck the mail order price for a minute. Okay, so what I'm saying is this: back in those times, there was less people in America. Okay, I'm talking about. We we're talking about a whole region after the Louisiana Purchase that had nobody that was pretty much American. Western territories. Okay, yes. And what I'm saying is, you know, besides the Native Americans, they ran the shebang. They had everything. But the ones that considered themselves American that were coming over there, they didn't have nobody to breed with. So they'd probably be about 30 wagons and, like, let's say, oh, 20 females and maybe, like, 14, People, okay, 14 but, girls. But you're basically to 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 boil down and what maybe, you're saying. Maybe lesser than that. To know? boil down what you're saying is people from outside na- women exclusively from outside nations would immigrate and find a husband here in the United States to increase the population. No, what I'm saying is it was like the Swiss family Robinson, okay? They're sitting there, there was nobody else around. They need women to help make the population. Like a place that might have started off with a family of seven people ended up being a place of fucking 5,000 people. And then it was a town named after the whole fucking family all together. It's half the counties we got in America are named after old cowboys that just dropped down in that fucking land. You know what I'm saying? You know, Kind of. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, like Briscoe County and fucking Waco. Oh, what's that shit? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the dude that bought Nevada. What about Park. the county I grew up in? Sonoma. See? There you that, go. Well, that's not an American name, Shelby. Yeah, the name Sonoma? American Sonoma? No, name. it's not. What is it? Spanish. You know what? You're going to quit getting aggressive, okay? We Look, understand. You, you are the only one here getting aggressive, my friend. <laughs> I, I am getting what is referred to as saucy. Saucy? Yes. That's really tight and pressed with something up your ass. Okay. Hey, no, 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 no. The only okay, one. Wait a minute. Look, look. I'm talking about population growth. As was I. Except for I'm saying, once you allow these people, I was just trying to go do a little flashback and explain how it happened back in the old days. But now I'm saying that if the country is united, like what you're talking about, then. Well, but you have you, to say the continent. Well, the continent. What do they call it? The equator. <laughs> the equator. No, the con- the co- Okay, so there is there's the American continent and the the uh, the uh, European continent, which right. consists. The American continent consists of uh, a, a lot of bullshit, States. super far north, Canada, Alaska, the United States, and South America. Right, and what I'm saying is that's why I'm saying I'm talking about South America mostly. Mexico and South America is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, so I'm saying that's why I said the equator. So anything down there, okay, that comes up will be good breeding material for those that are single, lost, lonely, that want somebody to love. Well, that's what they're looking for too, except for not passing so much judgment and having all these silly rules and laws. Well, and something else that I really think is a main driving force for this existing. Imagine if you're just just as a pure game of of hypothesis here okay say you are china or russia and one day you decide i don't have enough natural resources i'm going to invade hmm, venezuela or just any small struggling south american country argentina yeah argentina is not small but you know what I mean. I know Peru. Uh, just comparative to the sheer square footage of America as an American, every everywhere looks small to me. I'm sorry, but true. Uh, okay, so just back to the this game of hypothesis, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, you, you with your massive Chinese or Russian military might invade and take over. That is what would happen nowadays. You would you would face a lot of government sanctionings and possibly some strikes from some other people, but ultimately, nobody would probably give a shit. Now, that's true. Let's, well, now, wait, wait, wait. Now, let's take that hypothetical 
this this hypothetical situation and move it into a world where we have this united collective of 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 American continental countries, where you're China and you invade Argentina, and then all of a sudden you have the armies of Colombia, Venezuela, the United States, Canada, and all of these other right, uh, right. fucking South American countries kicking you in the cock and bitch slapping you like a pimp to a hoe, <laughs> kicking you off of this continent. We would be unstoppable. We would have nobody that could re truthfully challenge us. We would be in, if we could unify all of the might of the American continent, we would truthfully, we would have so many natural resources. We would have such manpower. We would have such militaristic brain power between all of all of the military might of the United States and all of the untapped scientific brain power of South America and Canada combined. We would be absolutely unstoppable. One thing, though, with America is, you know, like I always talk about the plan 911 of the rest of the world. So my point is this, though, right? South America has a, a, an outrageous number of drug lords and drug dealers. Cartel and, problems. And it goes further close to us by Mexico, you know what I mean? I believe if we went, instead of wasting our time in other foreign countries like Afghanistan, Afghanistan, Kuwait, Iraq, you know, Libya, you know, and all these Iraq, places. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm Syria, Iraq. Hold on now. Uh, I'm just trying to help. Let me finish. Okay, let me finish. I'll let you finish. Let me finish. Okay, what I'm saying is, is right. Okay, I don't give a fuck where they are. I'm just using, I'm just talking, right? I'm just saying. So, my point is this, okay? If they went and handled all these drug lords, you know, all these cartels, and they took away all the damn sex traffickers that's going through these countries, taking these young girls and stuff, and you finish in, in, you know, to a point where the people feel safe in their countries. A unification thing might be able to be occurred. It might be able to unify the people with the United States to make this thing possible. Besides the fact that the economy in these countries are mighty low, so if you help them out with wealth as well, instead of catering to a country far off where they don't really give a fuck about us, it can betray us at any moment. You know what I'm saying? Instead of people from a country below us that actually do care about it, because hey, they profit from us. They profit from our tourism, you know, these countries need their own defense. They need someone to have their back. And so your thing, what you're saying, would not in the countries would be perfect. You know what I'm saying? As long as America can step up and try to go and handle the problems that they need to be executed because they don't have the resources and the power to do it, but America does. So when the United States grows a pair and helps out the people that's closest to it, will be stronger, and then can no other country or nation be able to get between us. Well, and that actually makes me think of something else, too, where uh, where we as a nation have exported a lot of our labor and manufacturing across seas to, like, China and stuff like that. I just, I, I, I don't understand why we don't do that with, as... As uh, predatory as that may be to the uh, less advantageous nation, I don't understand why we don't ship our our manufacturing to Mexico or some other South American state where you don't have to ship it across an actual ocean to so, get it back to you. Like we should be, even if it's even if it's our predatory spending, like we do with China or Vietnam or stuff like that, where we have them manufacture our goods for pennies on the dollar. Why don't we do? Why don't we do that with the nations connected with us and bolster their economy well, with just that? We should be we should be putting that effort into our neighbors and not well, our we, distant we, neighbors. We have with some of our car companies there in Mexico now. Uh, I forget. I think it was but our tech industry is where we need we need to we need to bolster not only the economy but the educational sector of South America by shifting our technological uh, shipping and buying needs from China and Vietnam and a lot of these countries to them, because then it will force that country to technologically evolve at a faster rate than it currently is. 
I like to say thank you guys for listening. Please, please, please subscribe. Like, uh, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when we put out a new video. Please leave a comment about what you thought about the video. Peace be with y'all. Bless us.